One, setting up the right click on your mouse. Two, understanding the launch pad. Three, understanding the dock and dock preferences. Four, screen recording, how to set up a screen capture session. Five, using your student email. Six, understanding Teams. And finally, accessing and understanding the M drive. After this short video, you will be expected to complete a series of tasks to demonstrate back to me what you've learnt during this tutorial video. Go to the Apple icon in the top left hand corner of your screen. Scroll down to System Preferences. And then find Mouse in the System Preferences. Once the menu is opened uh, for the mouse settings, you need to ensure that secondary click is selected. So click on the little white box, make sure that the tick appears with inside that box. Quit system preferences, just like so. And then just as you would on any other normal mouse, you can use your middle finger and right click. So the launch pad is where all of the applications are kept on our Mac. And to access the launch pad, we need to click on the launch pad icon that should be down in the dock at the bottom here. Now, depending on the version uh, or the OS that you're working on, um, the icon may look a bit different. On your Macs that you're working on now, it should look like there's a square with nine other colored squares inside it. If we click on that icon, it will open up the launch pad and we can view all of the different applications available to us on this Mac. On top of your mouse, there should be a small gray ball. Now, if you put your index finger on that ball and scroll to the left, you'll be able to access the different pages and different applications within the launch pad. Scrolling to the right and scrolling to the left. Okay. If you click on the launch pad icon again, it will close the launch pad. Now, there's another way that we can search for applications as well. If we go to the top right hand corner, of our screens you'll see a small uh, magnifying glass and if we click on this it will open up spotlight search and we can simply type in what we're looking for so for example if we're looking for word document we can type in word and it'll actually suggest word document for us if we're looking for logic pro it will open up and suggest the logic pro app for us At the bottom of your screen, you should see your dock. The dock is where all of your favorite or frequently used apps can be kept. And you can arrange these apps by clicking and dragging. You can also remove apps from the dock by clicking and dragging on a particular app and just placing it in the center of the desktop. The word remove will appear above it and then just let go of the mouse and it will disappear. I'll do that one more time. You can also add apps to the dock from the launch pad by entering the launch pad and clicking and dragging the desired app to the launch pad. So Let's say, for example, I want Ableton Live from the launch pad into my dock. Click and drag the application down onto the dock. You can also change the dock behaviors by right-clicking on the line towards the end of the dock. So this small line right here. If we right-click on that line, first thing we want to look at is that you can change the position of your dock by highlighting position on screen. So we can have our dock on the left. 
you right click on the line again position on screen you can have it to the right generally speaking for me I like to have it at the bottom you can also save screen space whilst using your Mac and if you right click on the line again you can select turn hiding on this option will hide the dock when it's not needed but we have to remember that to bring the dock back we have to move the cursor to the very bottom of the screen and then your dock will reappear so cursor to the very bottom of the screen and then the dock will uh, reappear if we move our cursor to the middle of the screen it will disappear if we decide to have our dock on the left hand side it will disappear to the left to make it reappear again move our cursor to the very left hand side of the screen and it will reappear the last thing I'm going to show you about the dock is that you can turn a magnification on now this is just useful um, especially if especially if you've got lots of different applications on your dock and the app icons themselves are quite small if we turn magnification on every time we scroll across our apps they will just kind of get bigger they will that magnification will work and the icon will just become bigger so we can actually see what we're looking at so in the next part of this video I'm going to show you how to do a screen recording now screen recording or screen capture is a great way of evidencing your work and progress now in the music and media department we use the screen capture to record the work that we're doing whilst using different software packages such as Logic Pro or Adobe Audition. We need to open up QuickTime Player in order for us to do a screen recording. So the first thing we need to do is to open the Launchpad and then find the QuickTime Player app. And the QuickTime Player app should look like this. Once you've found the app inside the Launchpad, go ahead and click on it. Once you've selected QuickTime Player, simply go to File and then scroll down to New Screen Recording. Once you've selected New Screen Recording, it should select your entire screen. You should be able to see a dotted line around all of your screen or it might end up looking like this. Could look like that. Okay, this is essentially saying where it's going to record with on your screen. Just make sure that you drag these dots to the very edges of your screen because we want to make sure that we record the whole of it. Okay, once you've selected the whole of your screen, go ahead and press record. Now, once you've pressed record, it will start to record immediately. In order to stop that recording, you'll see at the top of your screen there's a little circle with a stop sign inside it. Go ahead and press that button as soon as you press stop it will open up your screen recording it should automatically save to your desktop if it doesn't you can go file click save and then give it a name I'm just going to call this one test recording and then you can choose where you want to save it so for example if I want to save it somewhere other than documents, click on this little arrow icon here and it will give you more options. Click on desktop, make sure you've given it a relevant name, click save, quit that recording and it will appear on your desktop. So in the next part of this video, I want to show you how to check your student email. Now that might sound trivial, but it's so important that you check your emails regularly. Your lecturers will use the emails to communicate with you and you'll also receive other useful information from the college. So please make sure that you check it as and when you can. So in order to check our email, we want to, first of all, make sure that we go down to our dock and click on Safari and Safari is basically an internet browser. In the menu bar at the top type in 
outlook.com. Press enter. So in order to sign into Outlook, you need to type in your student email address, which is your student number dot student at glosscoll.ac.uk. Okay, different from me because obviously I'm a staff member. So once you've logged into Outlook, you'll be able to check all of your emails from myself or the college or your peers. Um, to write a new message, I'm sure you know this already, but we'll just go through it just in case. Oh. If you want to start a new message, send an email, simply click new message and then type in the name of the person you want to contact. Okay. I'm sure you've all done that before. In the top left hand corner, you'll see these six squares and clicking on that will allow you to access lots of different applications within Outlook. So you, you'll notice that you have access to Word, PowerPoint, Teams, which we're going to look at in the next part of this video, and OneDrive. Clicking on one of these will allow you to access that particular application and allow you to save your work online. Using OneDrive can be very helpful for saving and sharing your work with others and myself. In the next part of this video, I want us to have a quick look at Teams. Now, Teams was a crucial tool during lockdown and will still come in handy now even though things are go going back to normal. So what you need to do is open up the Teams application from the Launchpad. So click on the Launchpad icon and then the Teams application should look like this. If you haven't got the Teams application installed on your Mac, you could ask a member of IT to install it for you or you can find Teams online and sign in using your student email and password. Or, as we've seen in the previous part of this tutorial video, you can access Teams through your Outlook account by clicking on the nine squares at the top left-hand corner of your browser and click on Teams. So you'll be added to a Teams group where you can share work and ideas with the rest of your group and receive updates regarding work and deadlines from your lecturers. In order to access that group, if you select the Teams option on the left hand side and the Teams that you have access to will appear. Now, depending on what level you're on, level two media, level two music, level three music production, uh, click on that particular icon. So just for example, if you're in level three music production, go ahead and click on level three music production. In order to add a comment or to add something useful to the group, simply click new conversation and then type your message in the bar at the bottom here. Useful resources are kept in the files tab at the top of the Teams page. These resources will be relevant to the course and musical media generally. So you'll be able to find lots of extra resources on here that will be helpful for you on your own personal journey. Please remember that Teams is a professional platform and should be used for learning and professional communication only. Please don't go onto the Teams chats and start socializing. It's not used for that. It's for sharing ideas, keeping updated uh, with deadlines and resources and communicating with your lecturers. So in the last part of this video, I want to show you the M drive. Now the M drive is where you can save all of your projects that have a large file size. So it could be a project in Logic Pro, Adobe Audition or Adobe Premiere Pro. It is also where you will upload all of your production assignments. Uh, so I'm going to show you in a moment where all of the different hand in folders are. But first we need to connect to the M drive. The first thing you need to do is click, just simply click in the middle of your desktop and make sure that Finder is in the top left hand corner. Once you've done that, press Command and K on your keyboard. In order to connect to the M drive, we need to type in this server address. 
So at this stage of the video, I suggest that you pause the video and copy this address into the server box. Once you've done that, click connect, make sure the M drive is highlighted blue and click OK. You'll notice in here that there are lots of different folders. Now the ones that we're most concerned about, depending on which course you're on, is either the music folder or the media folder. And I'm going to show you both. So let's first of all have a look at the music folder. So if we double click on music, go into the students 2021 to 2022 folder, double click. And again, depending on which course you're on, will depend on which folder you need to access. Just for this example, I want us to have a look at level two music. Okay, now it's empty in there at the moment and you're in, in, in a while uh, during the task, you will need to create your own folder. But in here, at the moment, it's just the hand in folder. So this is where you'll be handing in all of your large files, Logic Pro work mainly, and all of your screen recordings. For this task, I would like you to evidence to me everything you've learned during this tutorial video. The first thing I want you to do is to set up a screen recording using QuickTime Player. Now, just remember that QuickTime Player screen recordings do not capture audio, but for this particular task, you will not be required to give any voiceover or dialogue. The first thing I want you to do is to demonstrate to me how to set up a right click. Second, Create a new folder and rename it using your first name and last initial. You can do this on the desktop and the M drive. Demonstrate knowledge of doc preferences. Decide where you want your doc to appear on the screen and turn hiding on. Four, remove any unnecessary apps from your doc. You can choose which apps are unnecessary to you. It doesn't overly matter. Open the launch pad and add the following apps. Logic Pro X, Adobe Audition, Word, and PowerPoint. Number five, log into your student email and send me an email. The email should contain the following information, your full name, a maximum of three favorite bands or artists or genres of music, and a little information about yourself. If you're a level two media student, I'd like your full name, maximum of three favorite directors, films, television shows, and a little information about yourself. Six, open up Teams and send a message to the group chat. A simple hello will be fine. Seven, once you've completed all of these tasks, stop the screen recording, name it Working With Max, and save it to the M drive. Remember, if you're a level two music student, you need to go onto the M drive level two music folder and create a new folder with your name on it level two media same thing just in the level two media folder or level three music production exactly the same thing level three music production folder on the m drive create a new folder in there with your name on it remember to take your time folks these videos that you're watching here they can be paused, they can be rewound, they can be revisited. So use them to your advantage. If you can't remember something from the start, go back and find the information you need and simply copy the instructions. These videos can be found on the M drive and on my website. Use them to your full advantage. Like I said, stop the video, pause it, take your time and use the information that you've been given.